Josh Allen versus Lamar Jackson, just one of the great storylines in the NFL this week. And to discuss some of these, we welcome in former defensive end, Leger Doosable. Welcome back to the program. Obviously, this one, Josh Allen, uh, the favorite to win the MVP, but steadily making the climb up the board is Lamar Jackson. He's now third favorite at 7-1. to one. Uh, I know you've got thoughts about that. Yeah. First, what kind <laughs> of a quarterback battle are you expecting here? Shootout. I mean, the, defensively, the Buffalo Bills are beat up. We know the Ravens' secondary has really struggled, so I think this is potentially going to be a shootout. Yes, I have thoughts about Lamar Jackson and how he could not be the favorite right now for the MVP after three weeks of the season. <laughs> I mean, he's not playing bad for a running back, right? That's what everybody thought he was going to be. <laughs> Ten touchdown passes, which leads the NFL – but it's, he puts you in such a bind, play in and play out, literally, because perfect example, in the red zone last week versus the New England Patriots, he fakes a sweep to the left, two defenders go with him. Underneath comes Mark Jackson. He skates into the end zone for a touchdown. Nobody even there. That's the type of bind Lamar Jackson puts you in. But let's talk about him as a passer, right? He's been so efficient in the red zone. I already talked about it. Leads the NFL with 10 touchdown passes this year. But he's been pinpoint accurate. The game-winning touchdown they had last week versus the New England Patriots, uh, Devin Duvernay runs a deep out. He puts it up top where only Devin Duvernay in the back of the end zone can catch it. I feel like he's really progressed as far as going through his reads. There was a couple plays when I went back and watched that film where he didn't go to the first read. He didn't go to the second read. He didn't go to the third read. He went to the fourth read. So having patience, younger Lamar Jackson probably would have left the pocket and ran and used his athletic ability. This is the play I was talking about earlier right here. You saw the two defenders go with him and he gets in the end zone. But he's really progressed as a passer and going through his reads. He's betting on himself. I said this before, like Aaron Judge. I think he's made already just this season probably $25 million more million because I believe last year he was 60% of the offense. I think this year he's accounted for almost 80% of the offense this year. Lamar Jackson is playing at a different level right now. So obviously you feel a little bit of disrespect there at 7-1 with Jalen Hurts. <laughs> so Patrick Mahomes hitting second, Josh Allen a 3-1 the favorite. Okay, so let's say that Lamar comes out on the winning end of this quarterback battle. Does that vault him to the top? I mean, he should already be there, honestly. You, but yeah, but I think it vaults him to the top. Again, the Buffalo Bills, to me, nobody thought they could lose a game. Now they lost last week because they didn't execute and, you know, situational football uh, instances and critical times in that game. Josh Allen on a fourth down play had the running back in the flat. He kind of skipped it to him. He also had a sack fumble on him from Javon Holland. That gave Miami seven points right there. But if Lamar Jackson goes out and wins this game, I think he already should be at the top of the MVP list. But I think this definitely skyrockets him because this defense, and yes, the Buffalo Bills defense is beat up, but their system is in place no matter who's in there. They played with two young guys at safety, two rookies at corners last week, and only surrendered, what, 21 points to the Miami Dolphins? Like, they're going to let they're gonna get after the passer with Von Miller and those guys up front when they rotate guys, and they're going to play cover two defense. They want you to matriculate the ball down the field, so it doesn't matter who's in. It does matter, obviously. Michael Hyde and Jordan Poyer really hone that and keep that defense in together, and Michael Hyde will be gone for the year. But it looks like Jordan Poyer could potentially come back this, uh, this week versus the Baltimore Ravens. But if Lamar Jackson is able to put this game together, and that's a big if only because his defense has struggled so much in the secondary, but if he can come away with this win, I think you have to put him at the number one spot as far as the front runner for the MVP. When you're looking at these secondaries, I mean, you mentioned the Buffalo situation. The Ravens secondary has given up the most passing yards. I mean, Oof. they're just not that good. So if you have to choose between these two secondaries, where, where's your lean? I'm going with the system. Leslie Frazier has this system buttoned up perfect. Now, Christian Benford is a guy that has started as a rookie corner, I believe was a six-round pick. Kair Elam, they took him in the first round, but Christian Benford played better than him in camp. So they went with what their eyes uh, saw during training camp, and they started Christian Benford uh, instead of taking Kair Elam. Now, both of those guys started last week because Dane Jackson had the injury on that Monday night football game, some friendly fire from Terrell Edmonds, but he practiced yesterday, so it looks like he could potentially – be back as well. So you're getting Dane Jackson back. You'll probably have Kyir Elam if Christian Bifford can't go. You get Jordan Poirier back, one of your Pro Bowl safeties. I'm going with that, that system from Leslie Frazier. No matter who has been in there, these guys have played well enough on the defensive end to win each game this year. And you see the uh, stats there. Uh, the Ravens are the only team in the NFL to allow uh, three 300-yard games so far this season, games against. Okay, so give us a game pick here. I mean, Bill's favored by three points. It's at Baltimore. Could be a rainy day. They're saying temperatures in the mid-60s. I mean, ideal uh, football weather. So what's your play on the line here? 
Yeah, I'm taking the Ravens in this game with the points. I believe it's minus three. Uh, The Ravens, I believe they cover, but I actually think they win this game outright because of Lamar Jackson in the run game. You talked about it it being rainy. This is the type of game that Lamar Jackson is going to thrive in. Again, he's more than just a running quarterback leading the league in touchdown passes right now, but he has back-to-back 100-yard rushing games. It's because he puts defenses in such a bind. You have to respect his speed, and when you do that, Guys like Hill, the running back, they get to explode. I believe he had like a 43-yarder last year versus the New England Patriots. You got guys like Mark Andrews coming underneath on a shovel pass. Easy touchdown. Lamar Jackson puts you in such a bind, and he's playing at an elite level right now. I think the Buffalo Bills are just beat up, not just on defense, on offense as well. Mitch Morris, we'll see if he can go at center this, this week. Also, Spencer Brown, their right tackle got hurt. We'll see if he can go. So this Ravens team, one thing they do, they blitz a lot. It'll be interesting to see how they play the Buffalo Bills because the Miami Dolphins blitzed a lot too. But they also dropped back in some zones sometime too. They wanted the the Bills to really matriculate the ball down the field. The Bills like to have explosive plays on offense. Can they be patient and just take what's there? Josh Allen threw for over 400 yards last week, but I think the Ravens still come away with this win. But take them in the points. I believe it's minus three or plus three for the Ravens. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.